Hey guys, how you doing? Good? Alright, and today I'll be counting down my top 5 favourite maps to play on solo zombies. So, these maps may not necessarily be the best, or necessarily be amazing, but again, as usual, this is my opinion, these are the ones that I enjoy playing the most when I've got either no friends to play online on zombies with me, or if I'm just in the mood to kill zombies for the funsies. So yeah, let's begin. So coming in at number 5, we have Shino Numa. Now, I choose this map because... It's simple. Like you don't you don't have to go for the power, there's no pack a punch. It's just simply get around the map and survive. It's a nice little breakdown from what zombies has become, I think. So there's no shields, there's no buildables, it's just a simple kill the zombies and survive as long as possible sort of thing. So yeah, number five, Shino Numa. So coming in at number 4, we have Mob the Dead. Now, I like this map in solo just because there's a lot to do and, you know, playing parts together and whatnot. The reason that it's not higher, however, for solo purposes is that there's... I, I feel this map is a bit too difficult just for playing on your own. I mean, it's fun for the first two rounds, don't get me wrong. But, you know, when you get to round 15 or whatever, the difficulty curve does rank up quite a bit. So obviously you've got Brutus, you've got the Bridge. And the pack punch is a bit difficult to get to, but regardless, it does offer quite a nice bit of challenge if you're on your own. Plus, gathering the plane parts has made a hell of a lot easier. But yeah, number four, Mob of the Dead. So coming in at number three, we have Derise. Now, alo alongside um, Shinonuma, this map is actually pure for purely for just for fun, really. But in addition to that, since you're on your own, you get more points for yourself, meaning that by about maybe say round 6 or 7, you can have all the teleporters up and running without the worry of having to, you know, think about other players from the start. In addition to that, this map has just made it a hell of a lot easier just being on your own. But yeah, I enjoy it and possibly some other people do as well. So yeah, number 3, Derives. So coming in at number 2, we have Shadows of Evil. Now I choose this primarily because when you've got additional people, you've got to share out the amount of time that you can use Beast Mode. However, when you're on your own, you can use it as many times, about, I'd say roughly about three times, maybe two times during a round, depending on how often you've used it. And this helps to basically open up the map and get all the rituals done a lot quicker. So, I think in normal time, usually when I've played this map with friends, we've only been able to get the rituals on about round ten, something or other. And in this, I've been able to get it up by about round five minimum so it's actually quite handy to do it by your own so but no I mean this map is fun with people but solo you've just got more uh, I think you've got more of a sense of freedom as opposed to what you would normally have so yeah number two shadows of evil so coming in at number one no contest it has to be buried now for those who are unaware this is the easiest map in zombies history or a very close contender primarily because by round one you could have a full setup you could have at least three perks, have pack punched, and, I don't know, just got the weapons you needed out of the box. Like, the possibilities are endless for this map, but the reason it's good for solo is because you can get all the points from the pickup weapons down there, stick them wherever you want, get as many perks in as you like, and basically have your full setup done by at least round one, depending on your playstyle. But yeah, number one, no contest, buried.